Now it's my pleasure to introduce Nancy Garrigal. She's a midwife from Papua New Guinea who works in one of the provincial hospitals, Kundiawa General. She has served as a clinical midwife for seven years before pursuing postgraduate studies in Australia this year. The average number of births per day at Kundiawa is six to 10 newborns, which accounts for 30 to 50 babies per month on average. The ward capacity is limited with four delivery beds, 18 antenatal beds and 19 gyne gynecology beds. The workload is very high per shift. Apart from Nancy's clinical work, she volunteers in the rural communities by providing basic health education, such as hygiene, nutrition, family planning, cervical cancer education, antenatal care, and men's involvement in maternal child health care, family health, and more. Nancy has a special interest in the topic of her presentation because Apart from the pregnancy-related complications faced by women in her country, cervical cancer is one of the most common causes of death in Papua New Guinea. There's no proper screening for cervical cancer and no pap smear services in most public hospitals and clinics. Many women are not aware of their cervical cancer status. It is further compounded by other related factors that prevent women from reaching the health facility early when they have early signs of cervical cancer. Therefore, Nancy was interested to know what the barriers were for individuals seeking medical help quickly. By discovering the possible factors, then how and what we as healthcare providers can address these issues to reduce the mortality rate. Nancy, I'm going to turn presentation over to you and you'll be able to move your slides. Thank you. Okay, you should be able to move your slides. Okay. I can start now. Yes, please. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for tuning in, in around the world. And thank you, Cecilia, for uh, the introduction. My presentation this morning is about um, the risk factors and constraints to early detection of cervical cancer among, amongst Central Islands women, which is in Papua New Guinea. And this is a preliminary findings from an ongoing survey. The outline of my uh, presentation entails brief background followed by AIM, the method used, and the results from the survey, few discussions uh, uh, about the results uh, findings, and conclusion, and followed by a few recommendations and acknowledgement at the end. As we know, and may some, maybe some of you may not know, Papua New Guinea is a small island country north of Papua New Guinea, and it's one of the developing countries with low income and poor resources, uh, which uh, trace um, uh, states of uh, um, health inequalities and increase uh, bed and uh, disease. And women in Papua New Guinea, uh, uh, most of them live in uh, rural parts of uh, the country. And there's a high rate of uh, death of women, uh, especially uh, due to cause of, uh, due to cervical cancer. Uh, a study in a, a report in 2019 reveals that uh, there was a high number of uh, um, women diagnosed with cervical cancer. That's around 1,024, of which uh, 666 died 
pay here. And also cervical cancer is also ranked the leading cause of female death ages from 15 to 24 in Papua New Guinea and maybe in other parts of uh, the world, especially in developing countries. And the main uh, virus that causes uh, cervical cancer is a human papillomavirus type 16 and in which uh, is responsible for 70% of cervical cancer uh, worldwide. Um, knowing that uh, Papua New Guinea is one of the developing country, um, most uh, women are not uh, accessible to good health services and especially with uh, cervical cancer most women are able to do the necessary screening as early as possible thus leading to uh, symptoms being uh, symptom signs and symptoms uh, being uh, deteriorating and most women present at the hospital late stage of cancer the, uh, the, there are possible factors in timely, timely presentation, early diagnosis, and appropriate treatment for cervical cancer that study seeks to um, find out. The aim of the study is to identify the common risk factors and constraints to early detection of cervical cancer. Uh, diagnosis and uh, appropriate treatment. And from this study, the data and the results will be used will be used to help in the preventative measures uh, of um, addressing and combating cervical cancer, and also with the diagnosis process, appropriate uh, therapeutic uh, interventions at all levels of uh, health facilities. The method of the um, survey is a cross-sectional survey on 56 cervical cancer patients from 2017 to 2019 uh, using pre-prepared questionnaires. Uh, prospectively, face-to-face -face interviews with uh, cervical cancer patients with uh, consent. And retrospectively, uh, patients' uh, information charts were retrieved from the medical records upon approval from Director Medical Service of the hospital. Ethical clearance were approved by the clinical research Office of Kundiawa General Hospital, Simbu Province in Papua New Guinea, for the uh, in the hospital. From the 56 uh, participants that were uh, uh, that the data that the results reveals that there were major major risk factors identified and the, these variables in their age, the parity, previous um, um, history of uh, sexual transmitted uh, infections, um, polygamy, having been in a relationship where there has been as more than one part sexual partners, smoking, betel nut chewing, and also family history of uh, cervical cancer. These were the major risk factors uh, that, that was identified um, in the survey. With the H, uh, uh, the, the bar graph uh, shows the the age. The bar graph shows the age distribution of cervical cancer patients by percentage. So between the age of 30 to 50 and towards uh, 60, most uh, patients were, uh, patients' age were uh, between this uh, range. Regarding the 30, 
Um, with the patients uh, interviewed, 29% of them were Nali Paras, and 25% of them were uh, at Parati, the Parati 5, followed by 11% with uh, uh, Parati 4, and then 9% um, were rather 11% with Parati 2, followed by uh, Parati 6. So there was, uh, apart from those who have uh, child, uh, who, have, um, who have had children, there were uh, the number of uh, patients interviewed found to be uh, those ones with uh, have uh, no children, which um, will be further uh, discussed in the discussion. Um, regarding uh, age when they have first child, 33% of them uh, have um, their first child at the age of 18, followed by um, 24 of them also reported that they have uh, any children. They were nali paras, but um, there were 13% of them at the age of 19, and then 9% were at the age of 17. Uh, the, let's uh, look at the pre their previous history of uh, STI. Um, almost uh, more than half denied history of sexual trans previous history of trans uh, sexual transmitted infections. However, 39% reported that they have a history of uh, um, sexual transmitted uh, infections and. Also, with the polygamy, um, it was uh, high, high number of uh, high percentage reported with a uh, percentage of 82% uh, that to have, uh, uh, have been in a polygamous relationship. And the smoking behavior, more than half, around 55% of them report to uh, have been smoker or they have been and 45% uh, percent, uh, uh, deny history of uh, smoking. Now, apart from the risk factors identified, there were also uh, other factors that also contribute to the delays that uh, the mother when, um, had experienced um, experience or you know, like uh, the mothers were um, unable to reach the hospital as early as possible and these uh, delay factors include their, their, pl their place of residence, where they live, the mode of transport that is, that is commonly used to uh, travel to reach the health facility and also the transportation costs and their previous uh, cervical cancer uh, screening history for, and also pep smear, pep smear screening, whether the, whether the women had uh, survived uh, pep smear screening done or not. And the, the, the last fact, uh, delay factor is doctor's review. Some may have been seen by doctors, but they didn't uh, come back for doctor's review. So this way, um, the table shows the summary of uh, the delay factors that uh, um, that were experienced during the course of uh, their disease uh, condition. Now, the delay factors is further um, graphed into this uh, pie chart. The uh, the Common delay factor that that is uh, seen is a lack of knowledge, of which uh, most uh, women in Papua New Guinea and even in my province, where I study, most of them live in rural parts of uh, the province, where um, there I there is a high uh, rate of illiteracy and the the ability to um, access. Uh, um, 
awareness and basic uh, knowledge on the disease signs and symptoms and get help and what to do if they have any uh, signs of and symptoms most mothers found to let that uh, part of um, the knowledge about the disease uh, pattern and also the other um, constraint or factor that is identified is financial constraint where most uh, of the population live in rural part of the country or province of which uh, their level is very low and if they have to come to the hospital then um, they have to uh, pay a lot of money for the hospital fee and stuff so financial constraint was another delay factor identified that uh, and also um, the distance uh, as i've said um, the geographical there's also also geographic constraint and the distance they they live is far and that also compounds their, um, their delays of reaching the hospital on time for the, uh, for screening and diagnosis and treatment. So um, it's more or less like uh, the delay effect is uh, um, very, um, the delay factor that each mother varies with where they live, their, their economical income, and their accessibility to uh, know the information about the cervical cancer and other related uh, associated with it. And also, um, not only the distance, financial constraint, and lack of knowledge, but also 18% of uh, rather um, yeah, eighteen percent of them were uh, reveals that uh, it's due to distance, but also lack of family support, ignorance from the uh, from the women, and uh, people fight when there is a fight between two tribes. Then there's roadblock, and women cannot be able to travel to reach the hospital or the nearest health facility on time. And most times, uh, diagnostic uh, delay. So a problem because of the uh, lack of uh, the necessary equipment and facilities available to uh, have the right uh, treatment and diagnostic tests. And finally, radiotherapy delay as well. We only have one radiotherapy center in Papua New Guinea where that's also a delay for the women for their uh, cancer treatment. Uh, further move on to the treatment uh, modalities that were um, identified. There were four four treatment modalities that were identified for mothers with uh, cervical cancer, and that includes chemotherapy, radiotherapy, surgical intervention, and other other alternative uh, treatment as well as shown in the uh, table. Um, looking at uh, each of them respectively, uh, with the alternate treatment, uh, according to the results, 56% uh, of them uh, verbalized or said say that uh, they have uh, resort to other alternative treatment apart from the medical treatment offered, and 54% of them denied uh, uh, having been resort to other alternative treatment. Surgery, only 4% of them um, found to have uh, some form of surgery that may have been the, the stages of uh, cancer that they experienced. If it was like uh, cervical cancer stage 1A, maybe then, it, then there's possibility for uh, surgical intervention. However, 96% of them uh, were found to have no surgical intervention because all of them presented the late stage of cancer. And with the radiotherapy, um, as I've mentioned, there's only one radiotherapy center in Papua. All type of cancer 
patients uh, access this service. And with our mothers with cervical cancer and uh, geographical brain and um, the financial constraint and all these other factors um, really cause big a struggle for them and most not, not many of them are able to uh, access therapy so only five percent of them were able to access while 95 percent of them have not uh, access radiotherapy treatment now as uh, with our discussion um, the risk factors identified um, Eighty-five percent of them were ages thirty-three to sixty uh, at the age um, when they were interviewed, and the the mean or the average age was uh, uh, around forty-three. Evidence suggests that older Black women, of social uh, status class, uh, present at late stage of cervical and breast cancer. Pregnant progression of uh, cervical lesions is found to be aged around 34 and onwards. And furthermore, 50 percent of first child uh, ages, women bearing uh, women's age at first child ages 17 to 19, and were at least paratri at the time of interview. Early age at first sexual intercourse or child birth. Uh, uh, also associated with uh, the cervical cancer development owing to exposure of uh, cervical squamous columnar uh, to junction infect insult by HPV virus or human papilloma virus in uh, teenage uh, years. Uh, in that, uh, it means that uh, the development of malignant uh, cervical lesion may be due to degree of the degree of of uh, squamous columnar junction of uh, cervical epithelium during teenage years, which uh, has a susceptibility to um, infective uh, human papilloma virus, which subsequently uh, affects the epithelium changes that uh, undergo malignant transformation over time and which uh, lead to cancer. continue 82% in polygamous relationship and it is a common practice in um, male dominated uh, um, province or central islands or society in Papua New Guinea where it significantly uh, raises uh, chances for STI in women although 61% of them denied previous uh, history of cervical rather history of uh, sexual transmitted infection, including human papilloma virus. Um, there's two evidence indicate, indicating that uh, there's an uh, association between uh, oncogenic types of uh, human papilloma virus and cervical cancer development, which means that uh, women who, who have, uh, who are, who have a polygamous relationship or their husband has been having more than one sexual partner they are highly at risk of uh, uh, contracting uh, human papilloma virus, which is possibility to further develop uh, cancer. And in the 1990s, there was a survey in the central islands and nearby islands from Simbu, where, where the survey is done. In Goroka, where 33% um, of women uh, found to have uh, HPV, 16 and 18 amongst 113 women that were studied and type 16, 18, 31 and 33 were serotypes in cervical biopsies from 70 women in uh, region. So the prevalence of HPV in relation to polygamous relationship is, uh, is a high risk factor for women who, who uh, exposed to history of uh, uh, and involving in polygamous uh, relationship. Furthermore, 24% of polyparos may conversely mean um, 
a lesser effect on, of parity on cervical cancer development. Uh, but, um, that means that uh, despite of the parity, um, or regardless of the parity, cancer is uh, predominant in, in any women as long as uh, they are exposed to the papilloma virus through sexual intercourse. And 55% of them were found to be sexless and beetle nut shoes. And 56, and all of 56 women interviewed, they did history of uh, cervical cancer of, uh, or any other form of cancer. So smoking and uh, smoking is also a major contributing factor to uh, cervical cancer or any other form of cancer because it reduces immunity uh, and also chewing of betel nut. Betel nut is a nut that is uh, commonly grown in tropical and other places as well with um, along the tropics. Um, it is a nut that is chewed together with um, lime and another plant uh, type called mustard. So it changes the color to people find it more pleasurable to chew in most commonly in Papua New Guinea. But uh, in terms of when it comes to cancer, cycle cancer, uh, betel nut is found to have uh, uh, mostly uh, damages the DNA, also can cause uh, uh, Increase chances of cancer cells, so women who who, who choose not are also at risk of uh, having uh, cancer, including cervix. And the history of cervical cancer is also another factor of which 56 women interviewed denied any history of that. Now with uh, the treatment, uh, as I've said, most women found to have uh, presented the hospital at late stage of cancer. So only person found to have uh, um, some surgical intervention, whereas uh, rather while therapy was not, uh, none of them had chemotherapy at the time of interview, and only 5% reported to have uh, therapy at the countries only radiotherapy. Uh, as I've said, we only have one chem uh, radiotherapy in Papua New Guinea. And since I think three or four years ago now, the, uh, the facility was not in operation because the machine was not working. And um, while I'm speaking, I'm, uh, it's a sad news for most patients and uh, including cervical cancer uh, uh, mothers in Papua New Guinea. Who, who are dying away because there's no um, radio um, facility at the count in the country at the moment. Uh, furthermore, 46 percent um, women interviewed they resort to other alternate forms of treatment, including herbal and traditional medicine, uh, given the availability of uh, conventional treatment like um, radiotherapy or chemotherapy or even uh, when surgical intervention not possible, they resort to other treatment modalities for their disease uh, uh, condition. And most of them are found to be on palliative care only because uh, most are present at late stage of uh, cancer, cervical cancer. In conclusion, um, just to uh, sum up uh, what I have just uh, Going through, 52% uh, of, of women uh, first child, which was uh, at early age at uh, 17 to 19, and at least they were paratri at the time of interview. So early exposure to um, sex and uh, is parity as uh, uh, as high risk uh, of uh, having cervical cancer, followed by 82% of uh, women interviewed were in polygamous relationship with their husbands having more than one partner, uh, which increases the, ch um, the chances of uh, sexually transmitted in, uh, infections, including 
a human papilloma virus which uh, is responsible for cervical cancer. However, a polygamous relationship um, is uh, very common and um, that can also implicate uh, in the development of uh, cervical uh, cancer. And 50% were found to have be smokers and 24% were nulliparous at the time of interview. Common um, constraints or difficulties that were um, identified, which have prevented the mothers from the health facility uh, early, uh, include the lack of knowledge and understanding of cervical cancer, financial constraint, the distance they traveled, not only that, but also the delay in uh, diagnosis and referral pathways at primary health facilities are also um, contributing to their delay reaching the hospital. And most importantly, their partner's involvement or the husband's support and involvement uh, is also a factor identified. And in, in Papua New Guinea, we have uh, uh, tribal fights occasionally, maybe due to some election related or other factors. Tribal fights are also a uh, contributing factor to uh, the delays and maybe the mother's also self-ignorance. Um, furthermore, the lack of uh, the ease of uh, access to gynecologist review also impaired ability to earlier screening, diagnosis, and treatment. Um, as I'm speaking, um, we have uh, we we have no uh, pap smear screening facility in Papua New Guinea at the moment, especially in the um, public hospitals and sub hospitals. The 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 ones that are from the private hospitals with uh, which are very costly for most mothers to pay and as the facility for screening. So pap smear screening is not available in the country at the moment. We do have between 2012 where there were some assistance from Mary Path in Australia screening the uh, smears. But however, um, in 2012, they stopped due to funding constraint and up till date, you know, a pep smear screening. And that is an, uh, a big uh, um, factor that uh, may may affect uh, our mothers to know their cervical cancer status. And finally, unavailability of uh, medical uh, treatment modalities for cervical cancer. Uh, women resort to alternative treatment like herbal medicine or other traditional medicine that, which they find best for their disease condition. There were some uh, recommendations made from this uh, uh, way regarding in regard to the results uh, identified um, there's great need for an health facility based education for uh, on women's health awareness programs emphasizing the need for factor recognition symptoms recognition and pep smear screening and early detection early presentation gynecology review when when they are symptomatic is very important and also involved uh, as been as much as possible in educational and awareness programs will to some extent uh, help promote support uh, for the women's uh, for, for for the women to access uh, health facility at early stage and furthermore improving I will um, Im Im improve, improve availability and accessibility of pep smear screening facility and programs is of paramount importance at the moment. As I've mentioned, there is no pep smear screening, and this is a great need. Uh, through through pep smear screening, it will help us to our mother's uh, cervical cancer uh, status. And finally, cancer treatment facilities by hospital provincial and national health authorities is uh, 
is a struggle with uh, only one radiotherapy center, uh, which is not uh, in use at the moment. So um, it is uh, recommended. It is a recommendation that this is uh, this has to be in place in order to help our mothers and others who others who are also suffering from other forms of uh, uh, cancer in Papua New Guinea. I would like to acknowledge the, um, my study subjects, uh, the obstetric and gynecology team of uh, Memorial Hospital, Kundiawa General Hospital in Papua New Guinea, and Mr. James Francis and Dr. Agua of Research Center, St. Joseph Memory Hospital in Kundiawa Hospital for their support uh, towards this uh, survey. Um, thank you all for your listening and your attention towards my presentation. That was to the end of uh, my presentation. Thank you all. I'm going to keep the recording going while we ask um, Nancy some questions. Nancy, this is so interesting because the ability for women to receive screening and treatment in Papua New Guinea for cervical cancer is very different than North America or what I imagine it is in Europe. Um, Helen wanted to know more about alternate treatments. Um, can you tell us a little bit about those? Are they local herbs or are they other medications that women find and try? Uh, uh, thank you. The other alternative treatments that women find, um, some, some they prefer like herbal, herbal uh, Med medication like uh, more, more airball from plants, while others uh, have um, uh, used uh, some, uh, I think there's uh, products uh, that are sold um, to, to re increase humidity and stuff like that. There are, there are other uh, uh, medication or like I would say they've um, they call it like immune boosters or something there's like what uh, white plus an example like it's uh, some are sold in Papua New Guinea and other uh, uh, yeah in Papua New Guinea where women who are able to uh, buy the or uh, there's good family support financially but otherwise most women I take like some traditional medicine or herbal treatment to just ease their signs and symptoms. So, yep, the alternative treatments um, revolve around um, this, but uh, it depends on um, each individual patient whether they are able to afford to pay for those additional supplements, um, supplement medication, or if not, if when they are unable, then they resort to. Uh, able and medicine depend on where they live. Yeah, basically that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nancy. Um, Anita asked, do you think intervention by early education of adolescents in schools could be helpful? Uh, that's very uh, important and I, I appreciate it, that uh, comment open because um, Unless um, cervical cancer awareness and knowledge, and even early child um, teenage vaccination, like it's done in other parts of the country, if it can be rolled out in Papua New Guinea, then it would be very um, helpful to some degree. And I th I think that's helpful um, way to prevent uh, the cervical cancer in the next generation. Anita was also asking if visual inspection using acetic acid could be done at primary health care facilities before seeking pap smear. Thank you, Anita. It is possible. It is possible, but uh, um, 
there is uh, not much training done on that for our nurses or midwives at the um, um, primary health facility, and that's uh, one of the one of the um, factor that uh, I am also taking note of that we have to uh, in um, the the gynecology specialists need to train more nurses and uh, wives in the health, uh, primary health facility to do VIA so that uh, at least uh, some um, screening is done before pep smear. Thank you, Anita. That's uh, well taken on board. Thank you. Nancy, I want to ask you, when we talk about polygamy in North America, that's marriage between one man and more than one woman. When you were talking about polygamous relationships, are those marriages where the man has one or more wives in the same household or, or more than one family, or are those informal relationships? Thank you, Cecilia. Uh, it's more or less informal relationship, but uh, sexually connected. Uh, it can be why if the women had other, other husbands prior to the current one. So the, it's like more than one sexual partner uh, than the one they're living with. So it's uh, vice versa between the men and the women. Uh, pre like predominantly, we used to think that it's the male with uh, more than one sexual partner. And that's uh, like when we support women having more than one wife, like in, in um, in, in in cultural context, but then I think the trend of this is it also um, can be a, a due to women exposed to other more than one um, men who uh, who have um, who may have uh, uh, probably have a papilloma virus as well. So it's like um, polygamous relationship mean uh, extra marriage relationship or ex, uh, more than one partners that have uh, sexual contact. Yeah, I understand. Um, with time for one last question, Anita has asked if the HPV vaccine is available for young people in Papua New Guinea. Uh, thank you, Anita. There was a trial program uh, done in the main uh, city of Papua New Guinea, which is in Port Mosby, but uh, I think it's more than five years now, and the program has never been ruled out to most uh, parts of Papua New Guinea, and we're not sure whether this is uh, uh, going to continue or not. But th this is also a great need for um, for a vaccination, vaccinating young young girls. So it was done, but uh, the the program was not sustained and uh, it was carried out in almost all of uh, uh, all parts of Papua New Guinea. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Oh, thank thank I, you so much.